let's do the top two. We got x minus 3y plus 4z equals 2. And the second one is negative 2x plus 6y minus 8z equals negative 4. Here's the thing. If some of you guys notice that all of the terms are some multiple of the terms in the other equation, all right, which is good. However, um, most of us don't realize that at first, and that's okay. So let's choose an, a variable to eliminate x. So if I was eliminating x, I would only multiply this top equation by 2 so that the coefficients of x are opposites. So I'd now have, this is going to give me 2x minus 6y plus 8z equals 4. And the second equation didn't change. Yeah, so uh, when we eliminate these x's, we also eliminate the y's and the z's, right? And the 4's. But here's, yeah, that's, that's something we need to notice, though, is we eliminated the 4, so we get 0 equals 0. What this means is that this equation is the same equation as this one. So if we were to graph those, we would get a plane, and that's, we'd get the same plane. The problem is, is sometimes this, this one doesn't always fit. All right, so let's do that now. So we got that uh, 1 half x minus 3 halves y plus 2z equals 1. And which other equation do we want to compare that with? The top one. Top one. So we got x minus 3y plus 4z equals 2. All right, and well, since we hate fractions, let's get rid of them. I'm going to multiply this top equation by. So let's multiply by 2. I'm going to multiply by negative 2 so that I have opposite coefficients of x. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let me give myself some space. All right, so negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1x. Negative 2 times negative 3 halves would be positive, uh, yeah, 3y. And then a minus 4z. And I do need more space. And this equals negative 2. And the bottom equation didn't change. All right. So what do we notice happens when we combine these? Yeah, everything cancels. So I do get 0, but we got to look at the answers too. Do they cancel out as well? Yeah. Yes, they do. Since that's the case, this bottom equation is the same as the top 2. And we know now that, well, since 0 equals 0 always and forever, this one just has infinite solutions. Oh, so you're saying if that third one...